friends. You're next. Thank you for joining us in this suitcase showcase. The incredibly talented playwright, educator, and director, Dr. Jack Wan. And I have teamed up to create two musicals, Jubilee Bar and Dance, a country musical, which was premiered at the Shelby County Community Theater, and Tower on the Thames, a musical comedy, which is completed, arranged, and is awaiting for the final orchestration and a premiere. You will hear elements of both sung and acted today. Dr. Juan and I have also collaborated on a new drama called Dawn of Dust, based on three of my short stories in the, in the universe of magic realism. They are strange. With the help of these wonderful actors and singers who you'll meet at the end, we are getting out to let people know that we have a barnstorming tour! Because, Joe, nothing sells unless you sell it. <laughs> That's why I'm here. So let's start with Tower by the Ten. Right? And since that is set in London, England, the fact that we now have a rainstorm is perfect. Absolutely. This show is about 45 minutes long, so relax. You both can enjoy it and still know that you'll get out of time. Now, one of two ancient Egyptian obelisks erected by Pharaoh Ptolemy were taken, no, 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 they were stolen from old Alexandria. One is in New York in Central Park. The other is in London along the Thames River. Meet Egyptologist Reggie Wilson and his spunky, newly appointed London Museum curator daughter, Beth, as they decide to join forces with a famous old Roman playwright, Terence, <laughs> newly arrived via the magic of the Tower on the Thames. There, they round up a zany and elusive comic villain recently escaped from one of the playwright's long lost plays, the imaginary and the real combined in a goofy but surprisingly thought-provoking story. To provide a fanciful and interesting evening of theater enjoyment, come join us in a mysteriously musical, mighty and mystical taste of delight. Come and see, enjoy the fun, best of London sights we've found. Both common folk and hoi polloi, leave our tower by the Thames. Come and see, it's quite a treat, and don't forget to bring your friends. It's sure to be a lark to meet at that tower by the Thames. Come and see, come feel the thrill. The elation all around. It's Ptolemy's Tower standing so proudly in good old London town. See the mysteriously musical, mighty and mystical Tower by the Thames. <laughs> now, Beth is writing a letter to her father. Dr. Daddy, I am so excited. Six more days and I'll actually see you. I've missed you so much. The Centennial Committee and the Lord Mayor have been all over the papers here hyping the big event. And my bosses at the museum seem really anxious to meet my famous father. This is going to be such fun. Oh, speaking of the job. Guess what? I found an old scroll by Terence. Well, I know he's your famous, your favorite Roman playwright, right? It's a rejection from the library at Alexandria. As near as I can make out, the author asked for a play to be housed there, and they turned him down big time, saying that it was incomplete. So hey, if there's a new play by Terence floating around out there somewhere, well, that can be 
pretty hot news. Fun, fun! Working together again. I can't believe it's been almost a year since I graduated and took this job. And a year since we've seen one another. I can't wait. I love you, Daddy. See you soon. Beth. Well, perhaps it is now time for Reggie to meet this mysterious character, Terrence. I'm a poet. A poet? That's wonderful. Good for you. The world needs more young folks with active imaginations and free spirits. Good for you. I heard you and that girl talking a few moments ago about a character escaping from a play. That could happen, you know. I mean, if some writer creates a character so real that it takes on a life of its own, I mean, it gets out into the world somehow. That, that could happen. I'm looking for ideas for my stories. I need plots. Maybe that escape character you were talking about could be one of them. The truth is, I'm looking for a lot more than that. Well, I hope you'll come back to that. I don't quite know why, but you really intrigued me. Seems like there's some kind of connection here. Uh, it's almost like we didn't meet by accident. Strange things happen. Uh, well, wait, I don't know your name. Terrence. <coughs> the plot thickens. My name is Claudius. Claude, yes. Can you imagine someone giving you a name like that? If you're guessing right, I'm the missing villain. That brilliant, hot shot playwright. Oh, okay. He won the Anthony a couple of times. A big deal. Concocted this dopey, bumbling antagonist. He gets foiled at every corner. That's me. But it's not me. This is the real me. Get it? The real me, and I'll use every rotten trick I can come up with, to get this admiration and respect that I deserve. I escaped because they've got me all wrong. Everybody's always had me all wrong. They have me typed as a bad guy, but I'm a leading man. Lend me your ears. When I shook myself loose from that stupid scroll, I took off straight for Heliopolis. Good old Sun City, I love it there. But wouldn't you know it, somehow Terrence found out where I was, so I had to go underground. I found this out of work oracle named Dumbaster. <laughs> and he showed me how to use the towers to hide in this remote places like this dismal town. Is the weather always like this here? <laughs> I thought I was safe, but no. Terrence goes relentless on me and got this professional virgin, Bustia, uh, to uh, lend, uh, lend him some scarab pin. It's one powerful piece of jewelry uh, right up there with the tower. With that thing, he can track me from anywhere. And what am I telling you this for? I need some real help. <coughs> the father is always interested in your daughter. What's going on in her life, and most importantly, if she's involved in any kind of a romance. You're in and out and up and down and down's my middle name. Love's an action verb, no proper noun, and I just can't play that game. All my friends say their lives are terrific. They found truly their prince among men. But let me mention the word hieroglyphic. Oops, I've done it again. Now it turns out that Terrence himself was a slave. He was free. He became the famous playwright whose plays are still performed today. And Terence wasn't here to try to recapture his character Claudius 
put him back into his play. But he was here tracking Claudius so he could free him, as he had once been free. He is a man and part of me, both sparks of eternal flame. But to live a man he must be free, since all humans dream the same. Well, now we move into a, another The dawn of dusk and the three one-act plays, the first of which is Hedgehog, the weird world of magic realism. The Hedgehog will magically take us to the very distant Back there, anyone? To the Pleistocene issue. We engage in an atmosphere of delightful fantasy. Disillusioned <coughs> scientists finds joyful reaffirmation there for the work that he does and the people he loves. It's a botanist, and he wonders why he has dedicated his life to the study of these plants. He has led through a very first-hand set of experiences by a long-dead professor from his youth, and of all things, hold up those hedge apples, please, a sexy talking hedge apple. <laughs> By being transported and interacting with the reality of the past, he learns why he does what he does, why it is important for all of us, and what the past has given us, so that we can be thankful to carry this gift forth. This story is about relationships. Now it is time for the botanist, with you, to be transported back the place to see here. I'm going to need some assistance. between the various species, uh, and all together, all equally important, each 
know his place. Uh, the, the way they move and the way they make me feel it assures me that something very special is going on in this forest. Uh, this is what real teaching should be. Maybe it's some kind of rite of passage. Like a religious ceremony. Can't you feel something spiritual here? I do. Like, like God. The second of our one-act plays, The Dawn of Dusk, is entitled The Dawn of Dusk. Here we meet Cosmo and Cleo, two boatmen who ferry humans across whatever lies in between to whatever might come next. Some passengers are deserving, some are not. Some make it, some do not. In one of these regular trips, a cocky and devious con man tries after multiple failed attempts to once again make it to some place new. His motives are selfish and self-serving. And the power that Cosmo and Cleo serve is ready this time to deal with him differently. After a spectacular eclipse and a storm, our ambitious little crook does make it across and thinks that with his gold and glib tongue and devious ways that he can control what is clearly a primitive world. He little knows what lies in wait for him there. This is water. In it is a boat. There is the shore. And over there, some new place that we all seek. The boat. You're late. You're early. Good day. Another solar eclipse. Good deal. It could be. Uh, the Chief's up to something special this time. Always something special with the Chief. Herm says this, Herm says that, and Cosmo and Cleo jump. Yeah, but we just keep running them back and forth, back and forth. But you know, there are a few who are able to see it for just what it really is. A barrier, a boundary, a crossing point. And what's our job? To help them cross. Like I said, big deal. Mm -hmm. Now I see the whole picture. You get it? The chief has been convinced to grant Tony his big wish. Put him in a new frontier like he's always wanted. Give him another chance like the lady wanted. But, check this out. Her may be a bit softer than a few thousand years ago, but that sense of irony is still there. This is great, don't you see? The boss has changed things. Tony's in a new place, all right, but it's some kind of ancient wilderness. Of course, all Tony's savage and greedy instincts should serve him well in a place like this, primitive as it is. God, don't you love it when the chief gets creative? And our friend Tony has finally got that world he can control. Maybe. I made it! I'm back! They brought me across. And I didn't have to die to make it. I schnookered them. <laughs> I really screwed them over this time. A modern day predator now on an Ice Age game board. The game is afoot. Mm. 
knives and sharp. Makes a good knife. Maybe a spear. Yes, I can use this. I've got my gold. I've got my brains. And I've got this. What I can't buy, I can kill. They'll think I'm a god in a place like this. I mean, do you believe it? I'm more selfish than before. He has gained absolutely nothing. Well, I think he'll fail again and lose it all again. Then he'll come wanting a cross again. Can't you see? He's hopeless. I can handle it. monster in this story. That monster is me. So let me get into character. Sidestep travels through neighboring similar worlds. A process that allows an unlikely pair of alien creatures to set about helping humankind regain part of the benevolent universal spirit that was stolen from them, stolen from us, from you. A young woman was mortally wounded by an evil insect. He will be aided by Ollie Deaton in human disguise. A kindly old lady. And she will be aided by the monster, the critter, her partner known by the consonants exhorting. He is a rough monster of some other dimension. But he joins Ali Deaton's desire to reunite the spirits of all creatures, of all worlds, of all dimensions. It takes a sidestep by the monster to find a spiritual brother in the young woman. Because only he can suck out of the poison what is necessary to give life back to the young woman and her child. By doing so, save them both and perhaps all of us. The wound is worse. Will she die? It's possible. We could lose her. Do you think you can get her back to Red Hook? I probably can. Yeah, I can. The brother is there. Now, I know you and that boy have a history, but he can help us. You don't like him, but we both know where that wound came from, and he'll know how to deal with it. it we are going to need him. The girl must be saved. She's different from the others. I, I sense something special coming from her. You may have guessed that um, the critter here and I are not from around here. 
His strength and his special abilities have been critical to our work. And I feel he's come to become a friend, and I trust him. And there's another thing. He's the only being that I have found who has mastered the art of sidestepping. It, it's a trick, and not many people even know about it, let alone practice it. The Brother Lawrence is alive. He has surprised me. He saved us both, me and my child. Good. But there's no question you'll be pursued here, and there's... There's much more I need to tell you. Do you feel strong enough to hear me out? Yes, of course. In fact, I've never felt stronger. You will be a mother. But you're more than that. Your son will seek and gather the lost pieces of, of our collective being. But now I see it as you who will be the one to provide the guidance toward all that we seek. What you achieve may finally stabilize all of our worlds. The Critter will continue to protect you. Now that I'll be around to guide you and to help in any way, but our abilities are limited. It will be your task to find a way to direct the combined spirits that your son will assemble. You will not be alone. Your son, his descendants, and the powerful convention of spirits will come together to stand with us. And, and then... Wasps! Wasps! Hey, did you miss me? <laughs> oh, uh, were you worried about this? Besides, I hate those damn waspy little bastards, even though I hate even more than I hate looking over my shoulder for your kind. Or even my kind. Anyway, I decided it's time to run, stop running for a while. I sure know that was a player, though, didn't I? You certainly did. And you're right, it's time to stop running. Rebecca, you may have guessed that your brother here is to also play an important role in what is to come. Like you, he'll be called by many names and many times and in many places. In the end, he'll play the part and join us, all with our scattered spirits in return home. Jubilee Barn Day. It's not a real place. It's depicted as a salute to the many, many stars, hopefuls, producers, technicians, audiences. The new musical hopefully gives credit to the long overdue values, ideals, and aspirations of the live and radio-based hoedown and jamboree. It reflected our culture in the 1940s and the 1950s. They had to come from somewhere. Maybe it was here in Jubilee. On the radio, we're on the radio. Just turn the sound up, set a spell while we do our show. We're on the radio, we're on the run, you know. Cool sounds, hot drums, sing the word that we love so. Singing love songs true, a song by our gals too. Often late at night alone, but knowing I love you. It was a hell of a ride, we were so young and wild. Living life like music mattered, mattered more, cause songs were better, mattered more because we sang them. Let's do it again. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Our board, our troop of singers. Jubilee Barn Dance Barn still exists. And the grandson of one of the major players in that show keeps up the memory. Keeping it intact, keeping the roof on it. And once a week going in to sweep and clean it up, he feels the spirits there. He feels the music. 
And one day when he's there, a young woman enters who is working on her thesis at a local college on these small and forgotten places. And when they start talking about the old time music, they find that they have an interest in common. And they start to get along. I don't know you, but you're pretty. You're from that other music city. Old timey rich with famous singers. While here we see newfangled pickers. Yes, here you are, and now we wonder what crazy spell we're living under. But long before the music starts, we find the balance in our hearts. That, that which brought me brought you to. You come here yet, no sound draws you. Those who played here lingered on. A sound that draws me near to you. I have heard their silence singing, sharing what enchantments bring. So Knowing I love you, it was a 